Hi, I'm Jackie Geiger. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Reltio, and I'm joined by our founder and CEO, Manish. Hi, Manish. Hi, Jackie. So I thought we'd talk a little about the vision of the company today. Um, the vision of the company is to power the experiences of the future with the data that matters most to your company. Now, we've seen in the news quite a bit how CFOs and CIOs are working together to make cuts to the IT spend. But there's two initiatives that continue to get funding, and that's digital transformation and customer experiences. And we know that companies are setting themselves up to thrive in the experience economy. So can you talk a little bit about what you're hearing from our customers and how they're thinking about customer data differently for the experience economy? Starting with the digital transformation or the customer experience type of outcomes that customers are trying to drive to. Uh, one thing that has become very loud and clear in my conversations with the of various customers is the need for a customer API. And what that means is that uh, as they're trying to stitch together new experiences, they're thinking about uh, a mobile app that they can roll out quickly where they should be able to, you know, just as an example, uh, if you're trying to uh, order a sandwich without stepping into the store, you should be able to go to your mobile phone, pick the store location, pick the particular sandwich combination that you want and have it ready by the time you go into the store with somebody greeting you with the specific order and saying, here, Jackie, here's your uh, sandwich, turkey sandwich uh, with extra pickles on the side. And that part has to be enabled with a new type of experience that gets rolled out. In order to create that new experience, especially now, you have to look at getting access to the APIs that will allow you to stitch together this experience. As an example, in this kind of a mobile application, you will obviously need the mobile app framework, but you will also need a payments API because a credit card transaction has to be processed. You will need some kind of a messaging API because once the sandwich is ready, you want to receive a text message or an email that says your sandwich is ready for pickup or it will be ready in the next eight minutes and we are waiting for you. You know, that kind of a message has to be delivered back to the customer. Um, and in a similar manner, where are you going to store all of the customer information? Do you want to go build the entire infrastructure from top to bottom for all of the customer information that you're going to aggregate today as well as into the future? you really need a customer API available to you so that your ability to accelerate towards the outcome of delivering this kind of uh, application is faster. That's the kind of conversation that's taking place. That's where customers are headed and they're all looking for how to treat or look at the customer API as a you know, first order type of capability that they can move forward with. So Manish, obviously the needs for customer data have grown tremendously. Can you share a little bit about what are the business requirements for a customer data API? A customer data API has to fulfill, um, I would think, three key uh, areas. First of all, this has to be the enabler for hyper-personalization. And what we mean by that is, do you have the type of information about your customers that you need in order to tailor the experience for them? So what are all the data points that you need to gather? What are all the attribution details that you need? Any kind of relationships or interaction type of details that will inform that 360 degree view that can then be used to tailor the experience that we deliver. The second thing that it has to cater to is the real-time operational scale. Because the time for a 30-day or a seven-day or even a 24-hour look-back type of rear-view mirror uh, analysis, that day is gone. Now you really need to be prepared at the point of engagement to provide key insights that will help you uh, with the new experience that you're trying to deliver. And this is where you have to figure out before the credit card transaction completes, is there enough information available to you in order to respond within the you know, 150 or 200 millisecond timeframe 
with an offer that can be attractive to a customer. So what is the information or the at scale real time operational capability that you need in order to make this possible? And then the third piece, which is a key and critical aspect is what we are seeing as the evolution of privacy and consent. Customers have to be enabled to manage their own privacy and consent type of information. And if you look at the enterprise today, the privacy consent type of information is gathered through multiple applications that they have, different kinds of experiences that are being delivered. How do you unify it across all those touch points and make it a part of the customer API so that as you're thinking about the new experiences, you're able to bake the privacy and consent information into it, and you're able to surface it back to the end user who can then look at, you know, are those the privacy and consent type of details that they want to maintain or how they want to change it or reshape in the way in which the company is interacting with that consumer. So that's the third leg of this um, trifecta that uh, we have to be able to provide or cater to through the customer API that we are designing or talking about in the experience economy. Okay, so thousands of attributes for hyper-personalization, real-time data to support real-time engagement, and then the last one was around consent management. So let's just talk briefly about this responsiveness, this ability to respond fast. You know, in our conversations with chief data officers, chief information officers, enterprise architects, they want to have speed, agility, and fast time to value. So how does this customer data API live up to that? The, the responsiveness has to be measured uh, in a couple of different ways. The first one is how quickly are you able to get it up and running so that you can start leveraging it, you start getting value out of it. That's the first, the you know, time to value is the first parameter that you should think about. The second thing that you have to look at from a responsiveness perspective is the, the real time operational scale uh, that you want out of such a system because low, uh, low latency is the, the requirement of the day and uh, your customer API has to be re able to react and respond in that manner. And then the third part of this is the responsiveness from the point of view of flexibility. Customer data is not static. There are always more number of sources, more attribution details, more relationships, more transactions and interactions of different kinds that can augment this 360 degree view that you're creating. And in order to make sure that you're able to benefit from that, your system or the API has to be flexible enough to accommodate all those changes without bringing the system down because your business is not going to stop and neither should it just because you have to make a change to add an attribute into this mix. That's where the responsive platform has to be a part of the capabilities that you should think about around this customer API. Great, well, thanks very much, Manish. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jackie. Bye.